So let me um let me give you a small example of what I mean. So this um this arrow and box diagram that I show here is one way to visualize such a tree. Um, you know I know it's sort of small, so let me let me drag over a, a zoomed in version real quick. Okay, so this is a a segment of that of that tree. So you know we see it start at the beginning. Um, this is a subtree where I'm out of position. So basically, it starts up here at the top where I've I've just posted the big blind, um, and then it goes through all of the different lines that we play. So after I post the big blind, we see that you know a tally here three out of thirty nine times uh, my opponent raised, six out of thirty nine times he folded, and after he raised um, eleven times I folded, nine times I called, and thirteen times I re-raised. So um, you know from this sort of graph we can you know, see all the different lines that that happened in, you know, this these these heads up and goes. So I've actually um in the past I've I've gone through hundreds of hands drawing this sort of graph on paper in order to break down the you know the tendencies of my regular opponents. Um, you know, however, I found pretty quickly that it'd be better to you know, just write a computer utility to do this for me. Um, you know, additionally, it's computationally a lot easier to like filter for hands between different stack sizes or you know take a look at the hand histories themselves whenever I want to or that sort of thing. Um, so today we'll be mostly using that computer utility to to visualize and explore um, the tendency the tendencies of my opponent. Um, but I just wanted to show you this, this sort of tree diagram so you could have in your mind you know an idea of what we're going for. Um, you know, I think that trying to think of an opponent's play in terms of the whole tree of decisions he makes uh, is a great way to do post-game analysis and to look for spots, you know, especially on later streets, where he might be exploitable and, and to get a big picture view of a guy's game in general. Um, I also use this sort of, you know, mental picture to, you know, right when I'm starting out versus a new opponent to start gathering information about him. Right, so like if I'm playing, if I'm playing well, um, and if I'm focused uh, on one opponent in particular, you know, one tabling or something, I I'll often try to build this sort of picture in my head, um, to, you know, to get a good idea of his uh, early street tendencies, especially early on in the in the match. Um, so obviously, this sort of graph doesn't show. Um, you see here, so for example, after he raises and I call, um, we every time, you know, we see a flop, of course. Um, and so the particular lines that come up obviously depend a lot on you know what the flop itself is, and, and this sort of tree diagram doesn't show that information. Um, but this is still a good, a good you know sort of way to see a big picture, or to see a you know, to visualize your opponent's strategy in a, in a big picture way. Um, I'll say more about this after the hand history review.